Upper Creek Angler, and we're continuing our work through Steve Scoots' book, Grayling Flies. This is fly number 53, Pedro's White Bead Nymph. The only change that I'm making to the the tying of this is that I'm tying it on a, a jig hook with a slotted tungsten bead instead of a, a straight nymph hook with um, a regular tungsten bead. Um, in almost all of my patterns, if the fly has a 360 degree um, similarity, then I tie it on a, a jig hook. I lose a lot fewer of them that way. I hook a lot more fish in the top of the mouth that way. Just prefer fishing the, the jig. So that's the only alteration that I'm making to, to this fly. Feel free to make it or not. Our tailing material is going to be some uh, grizzly colored mallard barbs. Tie these in at the back. This is a, um, a partridge of redditch jig hook, by the way. And I'm gonna bring my thread forward to cover up this waist all the way to the top so that um, it helps me out with the, the overall taper of the fly. And I'll bring the thread back down. In the bobbin, I have um, some cream colored uh, Simplify Nano Silk, one of my favorite materials to tie with. The body of this is simply some um, gold tinsel. And the, um, the pattern that is tied in the book is a very skinny one. So I'm not going to do much to bulk this at all. Just run the thread back down so that our first turn of tinsel begins in line with the tails and then um, come back to the top. I'm going to um, simply tie in a little turn whip finish and um, I'm going to use the rotary function on my vise to advance the tinsel since it's covering the whole body. So all I've done is um, moved my thread to a, um, a bobbin holder while I advance the, the gold tinsel up to the top. So we'll take the gold tinsel to the top, making touching wraps. It'll go easier and nicer when we're out of the way of the hook. Maintaining pressure on the tinsel. Come in and reach in to tie off the tinsel and clip that short. Make sure your tails are okay here. Um, I think another uh, suitable substitution, if you're going to make one, would be to use um, some Coctelion fibers uh, for this. Just um, these mallard fibers are not the sturdiest guys in the world, so that would probably also be another um, alteration that that you can make to increase the durability of this fly. The collar on this is simply some black ice dubbing, and um, I'm going to tie this in with a dubbing loop to really um, work on the buggy factor of this collar. The nano silk is um, relatively easy to split, but I'm not a, um, a split dubbing person. Come in and pull some of these out for ourselves. Give 
a bob and a spin to cord that ring of thread up. And then simply make some passes over. Pulling back so these go back over the back of the hook. Come in and cut our cord close. Got any wild guys that need to be trimmed, then you can do that. Simply grab a whip finishing tool and make up two turns of a whip finish. Again, this is fly number 53, Pedro's white bead nymph. The, um, the only major alteration that I made to the tying instructions was to tie this with a, um, a jig hook instead of a, um, a straight nymph hook. Just so um, I could fish a jig, which I prefer doing. I have not fished this fly. Um, I suspect it's going to be a killer trout pattern um, on especially high muddy water. Um, this is a, a white fluorescent bead, so it, it's going to um, fluoresce pretty strongly in um, some high water. They'll be able to see it from a long way away. The, the gold tinsel, again, a long way away. So um, definitely give this fly a, um, a tie and um, try it especially um, for trout here in the States the next time you're on some white uh, high dingy water. Tight lines.